Welcome to another episode of What's Up with Wendy's podcast. Today is part two of my sit down with Gossip Girl's Kelly Rutherford. You won't want to miss this. We're back with actress Kelly Rutherford, who has taken her battle for her two children to the White House. A petition has been filed with WhiteHouse.gov seeking a federal order to allow her young children, who were ordered by a judge to live in France with her estranged husband, to move back to the U.S. We're going to have the – where you can sign the petition. Please sign the petition on my Twitter, on my Facebook. We're going to post it all over the place. Kelly, your children are 5,000 miles away in a foreign country. How do you handle the day-to-day of this? Well, it's evolved, you know. I think in in the beginning it was just, I I don't even know how I was functioning. Um, I don't know how anyone would. It was just, the kids and I, we both, it was just shocking. It was just beyond. Mm. Um, I feel like this is something that I've dealt with day to day for the last three years. It's changed. The kids, you know, like even now, you know, we'll be Skyping and all of a sudden they'll just start crying, you know, and they're sort of being told they're not supposed to cry. And so, and if I say anything to them about crying, he shuts the Skype down. Mm. So we have to sort of pretend like everything's okay, even though we're both, we're all looking at each other in tears. We have to sort of say, it's okay, I love you. You know, you have to sort of, you know, when we're, that's how it is day to day on Skype. Um, Because now he's trying to take all my rights away. He just filed in Monaco after going in and getting residency, which makes no sense because they're a U.S. citizen and he's German, but now Monaco, is the residents of Monaco, or they're taking jurisdiction away from the U.S., um, which was set up by Teresa Baudet, this judge, Teresa Baudet in California. Was clearly I wonder how she sleeps at night. That's all I have to say. How, I don't I even know no how idea. she gets through the day. I have no idea. I have just, you know, God bless her. I, I am not sure what this was about, but... Um, anyway, this, now he's gone in and said, you know, as of June 22nd, he he filed something that June 22nd, he wants to take all my rights away. And I'm thinking to myself, this is what he planned all along. This is what he told me he was going to do. And I just never thought in a million years it would happen in my own country. You know, Mm -hmm. I just, it never occurred to me that it could happen. Like I thought, okay, he's going to threaten this. He's. You know, he sues people for a living. He's very adversary. You know, he's very aggressive in that way. So I thought, well, this is going to be his reaction, and that that I can't change. You know, right. but I thought, well, my own court system's going to protect me and my children, and so that's what's been really. And in terms of the kids, you know, we we have our high moments and our low moments. You know, and we get through it. I'm there a lot. I go back and forth a lot. I have to be here to make money and to be able to f- afford to go see them. And um, and the expense on and, you, the burden on you, because you have to find a place to stay. You have to pay for a place to stay. Yeah, the airfare, yeah. um, being, being away from your home and your work. Yeah. And to be able to work consistently, I thought, well, what if I had a nine to five job? I would never see my children. Right. You know, this is also where if you look at it, it's it's kept me from being able to, to work a normal in the normal way that I have a job. Do you know what I mean? So I've had to sort of figure things out, and, and I, I'm doing the best I can to do that. But, you know, what if this happens to a parent that has a 9-to-5 job, and how, how do they get time off to go see what they go see them, you know, three times a year or whenever they have their holiday. I mean, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? And right. And they drag you into the court and they make you sit there all day for, for saying, okay, you'll come back another day. So, you know, by the time you're, you're in court three or four (laughs) times, your boss is like, we're done. You're and then you don't have a job. And then, you know, then here we go. Even it was so interesting because while I was in court, I was accused of having a job and that was used against me that he tried to use that I worked, you know, and even though I only, I worked, you know, however many days of the year on gossip running, it was like 85 or, you know, something. Cause we had three months off for hiatus every, every year. Um, you know, it was then, so it was used against me that I had a job. Um, but then of course nobody was paying my bills and I was expected to pay for half the school and medical and all of this other stuff. But yet I had a job and that was a bad thing as a mother to have a job and to have to work. And then when, the kids are being sent to a foreign country. The advocate for them said, 
you know, after I'd spent everything I'd made working on gossip girl and legal bills, the kicker was that the advocate said to me, well, how do you plan on supporting your children anyway? Oh, and I say so you're myself, damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> it's I was like, like, wait a minute. What, what, what do you want me to do? Just tell me and I'll do it. But I, I'm trying to connect the dots here. So I, I'm not getting any help from anyone here. And yet, and I have legal bills and I'm working to pay for the school and the this, but now it, it was just, it's so interesting how you think it's all going to make sense is my point. And you get in there and it doesn't make sense. And, you know, you, you start to question your own common sense, you know, through the process. Of course. Thinking, it make you, okay, it wait, makes you crazy. Common sense. Yeah. That, that things would be for the children. And I, I thought that's what this was. This was not about he and I, and he said, she said, and all of that, because we have evaluations for that. And we have, you know, all of this other stuff. So anyway, but the point is at this, at this juncture is that, you know, you have, my children are U.S. citizens, and for every, you know, for their rights and for the rights of all U.S. citizen children, this is an important case. It's unprecedented. It, um, it, 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 we, I want to make note, too, also, that no court has ever before ordered American children to move to a foreign country to accommodate a non-American parent denied entry to the United States. Ever. This no has evidence. never, ever, ever happened. Yeah, I mean, parents go live in a foreign country. You know, you can decide it for it to be a certain way. In other words, if we were separating and said, you know, okay, listen, I'll I'll be there part of the time. You can be here, which of course I offered to do, but that wasn't enough. So, you know, you can do it in different ways, but you can't be court ordered to only come and visit your country. It's not something that we can do. It's it's our constitution says you have a right to to live in your own country. And it would be like them saying to anyone, <clears throat> like saying to you or to me, you now are forced to live outside of the U.S. and you can only come back when I say you can come back. Mm. Well, well, that doesn't happen. Have you ever heard of anyone? Like, you know, it just is not the way it, it happens. And um, so this is this is why it's been a bit of a challenge in federal court, though I think we're making progress because nobody's ever heard of this. I mean, when when it was argued... In federal court, they couldn't state a case where this has happened. There were cases where kids had dual citizenship, dual passports, you know, that kind of right. thing where it became, all right, whose country and what and where. And, but this is a case of, this is my case, is two children who have U.S. passports. It's amazing. Young children. So what do you, what, um, how, what, when, was the, when was the last time you saw the kids? I saw them about two and a half weeks ago. I was there for 10 days. Oh, and how was and that? It was amazing. You know, we're like monkeys. We're just all over each other. It's like, you know, it's it's really, it's like you've been in a desert and then, you know, there's water. It's like, mm. it's just, you know. How you can't you smell them and kiss them and hug yeah, them and just, brush their hair and do the, do the things, the day-to-day -day things that you would be doing naturally, normally. Exactly. I mean, I think it's made us closer and more bonded in, in a way. Um, do they say, Mommy, because, when can we be together? Do, what do you say to them? I mean, they just keep saying it's unfair and and why does Papa do this and it's unfair. And I said, it is unfair. I agree. I don't deny their feelings. You know, I said, it is unfair. And I said, hopefully, you know, we'll get it worked out and hopefully things will change and, and maybe he'll see it differently or he'll want what you guys want. And I said, you know, mommy wants what you want at this point. You know, it's like, you know, the the... You know, nobody asked them if they wanted to be taken out of their school and away from their mother and away from their country and and sent there. And, you know, now they're there. They're in school. They've made friends. Do you know what I mean? So it's just caused a lot of repercussions. It's caused repercussions for them emotionally. It's caused legal repercussions because now, what, am I now supposed to go fight this for another five years in a foreign country? Oh, how how can you... Taxes in the U.S.? How can you, you know, possibly... Like, I, you, yeah. you, you know, how, how much, how much can one person take as a mother's strength is. And who's going to give that time back with my kids and who's going to give me the, the money, you know, like everything you've worked, no one, you know, it's like, even if tomorrow they say, which we hope they do, you know what, this is, this was not right. We're sorry. The kids should come home, be in their own country. Um, you know, yes, 
thank you for offering to accommodate him in the foreign country. You know, we know you did that from day one, but now we're saying, you know, thank you so much. You can take them back and forth. And if he can come here or Canada, great. Um, you now have kids that have been now try, you know, reestablish in another country. You know, now they have to come back and, and readapt. Right. So you put the kids through so much. Forget, you know, I mean, yeah, of course I have feelings as a mom, but I mean, just that aside, uh, yeah. what about the kids and their feelings? And they're having to now reacclimate to being, in, it's just what you, what they've been put through is just a, so unnecessary. Painful. Um, I can't imagine when you're get when you're getting ready to go and you're on the plane. Like I, th- I think about you because I followed this story as I've told you, um, and as a mom and a, and a single mom and and someone who's been through a lot as well. I think about you, you know, going there and then being there and then leaving and I just and all the emotions and all the. I just I I just want to wrap my arms around you and tell you they're going to come home. I know. And you're doing everything possible to get them back home and as quickly yeah. as you can, which in, in, a, in a world where unfortunately it's not fair and it's not quick um, because time is important because, you know, they're, they, were, they were babies and now that it's been three years and, and you want them home. They're, it's, mm. Yeah, oh. I don't believe it's really hard. I mean, when, when we have to say goodbye at the airport, it's crazy. And I wonder how their dad can watch that and, and not, see their, their, you know. Yeah, it's weird. Like, I think, God, there's got to be such a disconnect because. Is there heart you know, in there? As much as I wouldn't, as much, even if I really didn't like him as a person, I wouldn't do that to my own kids. You know what I mean? Like, right. Even if I thought, okay, there's a reason, like, whatever. But I wouldn't want to put them through the heartache of missing their father. You know what I mean? Or not being with their dad. So forget my feelings about him, whatever they would be. But And I don't really, I mean, I wish him well. I don't. However he chooses to live his life is his choice, and I'm, you know, we each do the best we can do, but it's, you know, how do you watch it's, it's, I mean, what we go through at the airport? I mean, I literally have to put my glasses on and keep myself from completely losing it in front of the kids before I get, and they know, they see it, and the day before, we all get really emotional because we know, Yes. and they ask me the whole time, how many more days do we have, Mommy? How many more days? And it's like, I feel like we're, you're like, I'm like, really? I'm in a, we're all Americans, and... Like we're from, like this is happening. I feel like it's a movie where. Anyway, this is it why is like we, a dream. I started it's like, the petition oh. and I started the organization. Is I thought you know, there's so many people that don't have a voice, Wendy, and I I know that and I realize that I know how tough, even in in the position I'm in where people will listen, even in the position that I'm in, which I'm so grateful, that it, how challenging it's been. So if it's challenging for me and I have people that will listen most of the time. And you can get out I mean, there in the news. I can't even imagine. The... At least I can get out and talk about it. And I'm heard most of the time, even if there's no solution yet. You know what I mean? Where there's at least, and I think about all these people that are going through this and have no voice. And worse, I mean, there's things happening where there's domestic violence and child abuse. And I mean, I hear all these stories now that I never thought in a million years I'd be hearing <clears throat> and didn't know about. I think, God, if I don't, if I'm not a voice, who's going to be a voice? Like who? Who's right. out there talking about this? No one. And we, we say always that things happen for a reason and there's no mm-hmm. reason for this to happen at all. But maybe there's the, the, re, the underlining reason is, is that you're going to make a difference. I Unfortunately, so. at the heartache of your children and, and yourself, but you will, you will make a difference in this lifetime for, uh, for other children. Like you, like you said, I'm doing this for my children, all American born children. Um, and for every parent that's, that's gone through divorce and custody and, um, let's do what's right for our kids, for the, for these babies. Cause they don't deserve this. They didn't ask for this. It wasn't their choice. You know, on our, on our board of directors, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just getting over a cold. Sorry. Um, we have Dr. Shafali who wrote this book called The Conscious Parent, and she was on Oprah, and I think she's getting her own show now, and she's writing more books. But it's one of the reasons we're so thankful that she's on our board is really about educating parents and saying, look, you know, as much as we, we get divorced for many different reasons, let's somehow focus on the kids. And, and even if the system is behind, you know, the family court system or needs to evolve and, and 
modernized a lot. Oh, gosh, do they ever? It's at least, yeah, right, because that's being 